Good evening, and welcome to The Author's Corner with your host, author Kimberly McLemore, as she welcomes her guests into the studio to discuss excerpts of their book. Good evening and welcome to The Author's Corner. I am your host, author Kimberly McLemore, and thank you for tuning in to tonight's show. Tonight I have an amazing guest in store for you, but let me just take a couple more minutes and talk about myself and the purpose of the show. I am the author of How to Be a Success by Just Being You, Are You Living or Existing, The Pros and Cons of Balancing Life, and the 2019 Isla Award Author of the Year for Social Awareness for my book, Memoir, Deception of the Heart, A Real Look into Domestic Violence. I am also the CEO of the Women's Small Business Initiative, LLC, the host of the podcast, Your Resource for Success, right here on iHeartRadio, and the founder of Author Kimberly M. McLemore, LLC. The purpose of our platform is to provide new and existing authors an opportunity to tell their story, promote their books, and of course, talk about any upcoming events. But let me introduce to you my very first special, amazing guest. Her name is Regine Bumper, author of the I Remember the Past Walked. Regine Bumper's mission is to reach as many young girls and women to begin realizing and living in their purpose. With her focus on self-discovery, Regine's motivates and inspires her audience to find and walk in their true self. In December 2019, she released her first book, I Remember the Past Walked, that focuses on her travels to Uganda, Rwanda, Haiti, and Thailand, while enlightening and inviting readers to expand their thoughts on travel, purpose, and self. Bumper has been featured in the Toronto-based magazine, Queen's Magazine, Marsha Speaks Podcast, and WPGC 95.5. She is currently a second-year Master of Public Health candidate with a concentration in global health and George Mason University. She received her Bachelor Degree of Science in Exercise Science from Shenandoah University. So without further ado, please help me welcome to my platform, my very special guest, author, Regine Bumper. Good evening, Miss Regine. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. I'm well. I'm well. How are you? I am doing well, and I'm very excited about having you on the show tonight because you are very special to me. So <laughs> I, I don't know if you can hear. I'm excited too. <laughs> I can <laughs> tell, <laughs> <laughs> and and that's a good thing because that makes for an amazing show for our listeners. So before we get into the interview why don't you just tell Regine the listeners a little bit more about who you are as an individual not so much what I read but just tell us a little bit more about Regine yes uh so despite what you you read in the bio Regine actually is um a very private person um and and I grew up as an only child and so throughout my my life I had a lot of time uh to myself to really just sit and take in the day and as I got older that progressed into journal writing and really looking more inward inwardly in, into myself and so the fact that I actually you know wrote a book um, speaks volume because I, I am a, a private person but um, even in doing so uh, I've become a person who has become more outgoing uh, very vulnerable and um, I think now that I've kind of used that inward inwardness, if that's a word, um, to my advantage to kind of pull that out of other people. Um, so I am a introvert and extrovert, uh, introvert by nature, but extrovert by life's experiences. So. All right. And, and I can agree with that. Um, most people don't know that Regine and I have met each other um, earlier, gosh, I guess it was this year, and the time is going by so fast. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember from what day is the next anymore, but we actually happened to live in the same community, happened to be in a book club that they pushed me into doing. <laughs> so. Yes, you've done amazing at, yes. <laughs> so the cool part about it is that Regine was, I just loved her personality, even though she's an introvert. When she, when we had the um, 
actual meeting, it wasn't so much the book club at the time, it was during a business type uh, program. We all kind of got together and people from the community who were, who had businesses met each other and open. And then when we did have the book club meeting, Regine was prepared. She said, I got my books right here. She, I mean, every book she had, she sold that day. <laughs> and it was like, okay, we're like, you know, now this is how you do marketing. This is how you get it out. And as Regine said, this is her first amazing book but the stories and the information behind it I'm so excited about jumping into but before we do that Regina you talked a little bit about the fact that you are you know a single child and I met your mother Regina who is amazing and sweet and we happen to also you know working close in the same environment which was crazy it's amazing how you don't know each other until you actually find out you know you're in this you know right. how small the world it is that we live in right but you know it's just mm-hmm. the story of how you just, you know, decided one day I'm going to do this. And the beauty about it is that your mom did not even know that you were writing this book. So how did this little girl who became an introvert become an extrovert? Talk a little bit that, about this journey. Mm-hmm. Um, so one night um, after I had completed all of my travels to all four countries, um, I had a dream that uh, I wrote a book. And so uh, anytime I have dreams similar to it of something, you know, telling me I should do something, mm-hmm. I kind of get like these butterflies on the inside. And when it when I get around to even doing some actions remotely close to it, it's like I get a little urge to like, okay, you need to do it. Are you going to do it or you're not? And so when it came to, to this, um, like I said, I've had those moments before and it was just like the the extrovert part was like kind of just fed up and wanted to be released, so to speak. And I had gotten to a point uh, in life, and, at, and when I say this point, I'm talking um, my senior year of mm-hmm. undergrad, so about, about 22, 21. Um, I was just ready to, to just try it, um, and I understood that my my works and everything that, that I experience is connected to so many other people, whether that be people I physically see in my daily life or people that I don't even know. And so um, I would say that being being alone, so being starting at the age of five, you know, uh, not getting that extra sibling I wanted and really being by myself, giving time to think about it, think about things that I want. And from five to the age of 21, 22, it was like all those moments of, of butterflies of whether or not I acted upon them um, or didn't. So I noticed that when I didn't act on those, those butterflies I was feeling, you know, somebody would, would miss their blessing, so to speak, mm-hmm. you know, um, in a lot of situations, I was the catalyst for something else it may not have necessarily been the, I guess you said the star of, of a situation, but if I had had done something, then something else wasn't going to happen. And so I had seen that a lot throughout my life because I was afraid of stepping into that extrovertism and just doing it and just going for it. And so by the time I had finished my travels and got to this point, I was like, you know what? Enough is enough. I don't know what's connected to this. I'm just going to do it. So mm-hmm. it took a lot of, a lot of, um, energy to overcome that fear because uh, I was you know you self-talk and you're like well what if nobody reads this what if right. nobody finds this interesting mm-hmm. you know I put my blood sweat and tears into this and so um I guess the the short answer would be I just kind of got fed up and I took a swallowed my fear I was tired of fear you know guiding me and I wanted to guide it and so that's what ultimately led to overcoming that that journey transitioning from the introvert to you know that the extrovert type Mm -hmm. but you know when you talk about that fear and again the making the base the big excuse me i can't even talk today (laughs) the big part is understanding who you really are and then once you realized Mm -hmm. who you were and realized that you were more than just that dream that you had and those dreams that you had been having. And even though being a single child, it seems that, you know, there's a lot of pressure put on you saying, you know, to yourself wondering what is best for you and how to move things forward. But 
because you took that step, your journey became bigger. But, but what interests me the most is how you decided to travel to areas that nobody would ever think about doing. And you did this on your own. You didn't really have a, you know, a tourage, uh, entourage of people to take you on this journey. So, you know, what made you decide that, Hey, I'm going to Uganda. I'm going to Rwanda. I'm going to places that nobody would talk to me about, or maybe I've only read in books myself or seen pictures of how did you get there? Yes. Uh, so I remember my freshman year of undergrad, right. You know, they have all these events, these tables and, you know, everyone wants you to come to their stuff. And so in taking all that, all that in, I, I visited the travel abroad office and they had a, at the time they had a trip to Ghana. Mm-hmm. And so I brought it to my mom and I was like, mom, you know, and I've always wanted to go back home. Uh, Africa is, is home and, and just, just travel period. And I told my mom, I said, mom, I, I really want to go on this trip. And immediately my mom said, absolutely not. Right. Um, <laughs> and deep, deep down, it was really the financial that was really the cause, not because, mm-hmm. you know, she was interested or anything. Um, but part of me, a large part of me didn't understand as a freshman at the time. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, man. And so from that day forward, I, I made I committed to myself. I said, this is something you really want to do. Um, no one, I, I personally have no one um, that, really in my family or that I'm really close to Mm -hmm. that has uh, freely traveled outside of like military. Um, You know, so I was like, I, this is something I really want to do. And so I, from freshman year up until my senior, I saved money. So every little work study, every little, you know, stipend I may have gotten, uh, I saved it or or I didn't use it at all. Mm -hmm. I chipped it away in my savings. And then, my senior year, uh, thank God, they had another trip to, to Africa, which happened to be Uganda and Rwanda. And the other snit tidbit that led to that was all about those four years, I began to do work as a, um, a freshman mentor. And with my, my university, they worked closely with the Nyaka AIDS Orphan Project, uh, which is based in Uganda that um, has taken on building schools because the kids walk over like five kilometers to get to school sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so through my work with the mentorship and that, that organization, Nyaka, I was able to, you know, receive information about this upcoming trip. And so all of my savings from that point on, I was ready. I was prepared for it. And that's pretty much how I got to, um, to, to Africa. And then Haiti came by, came to me because, again, of my works that I have done, that I had done all those four years with the mentorship. Mm -hmm. And because I had done that, uh, I was placed with a class that was actually, that actually took a trip to Haiti, um, which is how I, and you'll see in the book, um, we went to Haiti. And then Thailand actually, again, was because of my all four years. Each year, I would apply for this program that my university had that would allow for 50 students, faculty, staff to apply. And if you're selected, you get to go to a country uh, that you don't get to choose, and it's, it's all paid for. And so each year, year after year, I kept getting denied. Thank you for applying, but you didn't get chosen. Mm-hmm. And I was persistent. So each each trip was because of my persistence over the course of four years it's how I got to that point like I didn't have like I said I didn't have any so to speak of travel role models I guess you could say you know people who just um and so I my determination persistence to become that for myself and and essentially for other people that I was connected to so that they could then see that hey this brown girl is, is doing it, you know, she's not in debt, she ain't breaking the bank, I can do it, you know, to give somebody a mirror, so to speak, you mm-hmm. know, because I didn't have that, so I had to create that for myself and others. Right, and you did, and you created something phenomenal, and 
to be able to tell that story, like you said, that persistence is what's important. And, and that's in anything in life. And, mm-hmm. and like I said, the financial piece wasn't there. And, and it's expensive because, you know, I mean, it's expensive to go around the corner these days. Yes. But to be able to travel to a different continent, you know, and, and to go to these different com- uh, communities and countries is is just the story is amazing. And, you know, I've had the opportunity to read your book. A lot of us in our book club had opportunity to read your book. And we talked about your book. But the story of just seeing the wonders of life in a different way and understanding that there's more to life than just what's around the corner in your, you know, in the community that you live. And even though America itself is, it's a beautiful and our country is beautiful within its own self, but to see how other people live and to understand their cultures, talk a little bit about one of the um, places you went to in their culture and life. And what did you learn from that? Ooh, that's a tough one. <laughs> they all run so close. <laughs> uh, let's see if I had to pick one. I would say um, visiting uh, Thailand was probably the most, um, they're all, you know, beneficial and informative, but just the the Thai way of life, I Bring, coming up, I wasn't introduced or from, uh, around much of like, you know, Asian or specifically Thai culture. Mm-hmm. And so in seeing that um, the, the religion there is Buddhism, uh, various types, though, throughout the regions, uh, depending on where you are. But the just uh, Buddhism in general, the whole um, the culture is really surrounded by it. And, and Buddhism really, it, it projects love. Um, just how, you know, really most religions do, uh, is, the, is the love. And, and so in walking down the street, right, uh, mm-hmm. clearly I don't, you know, I don't look Thai. And they knew I, was, I wasn't a native, but it was like everywhere, you know, everything is just laid back. Um, there's no like, I got to go, I got to go, I got to go, got to do this, got to do that. Everything is in the moment. Um, everything is, you see the light. And everything, and when I see lights, I don't necessarily mean physical light, but mm-hmm. you see the, the beauty and the purpose for this moment, whether it be simply, you know, being in a cafe, eating, you know, drinking your Thai tea, or, you know, having a conversation with a monk, you know, everything has purpose. And I like that perspective, that point of view of really just slowing down. Uh, Thailand really taught me how to slow down, that their way of life. Um, just slow down, enjoy the moment because there's something in it and the reason why you're in it that you've got to get. And if you miss it, you know, you, you kind of throw off your, your purpose track, so to speak. And so um, one thing, one moment in particular that I will never forget is we visited a, a meditation center mm-hmm. um, and uh, a monk he he taught he dropped so much wisdom and and I just appreciated that the whole culture um, pretty much break they just break down everything so like the the things that he was saying was for example you know wisdom cannot come if the heart does not work we must not forget the heartbeat and not solely rely on the the eyes and ears you know, like bringing it all home and the, the centeredness and the focus that we we are so much more than the physical. Because in America, we, we are very um, material oriented and mm-hmm. driven, you know, and it's like you can't see the true beauties of life. You can't really enjoy and know what life is if you truly are just relying on your eyes and your ears. Like your heart has to be in alignment as well. And I, I think now in our world today, our a, a lot of healing needs to occur. You know, our hearts are have been damaged. But just the, the culture of slowing down and accepting life for what it is and then making the necessary steps that you feel you need to take to make life what, you know, you want it to be if it's not that um, was the, one of the biggest lessons, um, takeaways from the Thai culture that I, to this day, try to implement and, and practice, mm-hmm. you know, I read the, the lessons that 
the the monk was was giving us here in my book uh, I referenced them frequent you know just to just to reground me but um, if I had to pick one they were all great uh, but the Thai Thai culture definitely was was up there. Wow, and you're right. I, I like how you talked about the fact that it's we never take the time to truly see and, and believe in what we have in understanding that it's not about the materials of life. It's, it's everything else outside of that. And I think that mm-hmm. we had to spend a lot of time doing that in 2020. You know, we all know this has been a very unique year <laughs> within itself. So you've had to really take a stance back and, and, and spend a lot of time with yourself, you know, and not mm-hmm. be around a whole lot of others to, to depend on in order to make you have that feeling that you need to feel that you're wanted and needed and realize that there is much more to life than just the materials or having to be hanging out 24 seven, like to constantly being on the go. That's been a lot of pressure for people this year, um, having to deal with that. And I foresee in the future that that's going to continue on for quite some time. So with all these experiences and all the things that you have learned um, throughout the years, I'm even, you know, through college and then going through um, all of your uh, places that you've had to to visit and learn from, how have you been able to reach out to other people? Because a big part of your mission is young girls and women. How have you been able to reach out to them and helping them live their purpose, helping them, especially now? I wanted to want to focus on now because this is a different time. So what have you been doing uh, to help others? Yeah. So actually I've, I've been partnering with, my sister, um, Michaela, she is the founder of uh, Brains and Beauty LLC. And we've been, for the past two months, we've been cultivating a mentorship curriculum that we are planning to introduce in January 2021. And so that's pretty much been the main avenue and focus uh, to reach a broader, uh, wider audience, so to speak. Um, I think outside of that, to so just say, you know, we didn't have that um, within myself. Um, I was listening in, in your comments before you asked the question, um, and a statement that came up was, the only person we need is is us, or the only person you need is you, if you think of it that way. Mm. And so I think the best way that I've been able to reach back to those young girls is to be the example. Um, and so to carry myself in a way that if any, any young girl ran off the street, you know, would, would see me and they're like, Oh, okay. You know, that's, I, I would want to implement and, and replicate that myself. And so, excuse me. Um, I've been, I talk, well, obviously family members too, but those who aren't necessarily, you know, of, of relation to me, I've reached out to local nonprofits mm-hmm. uh, to talk to them, to their their audience, to young girls um, in the DMV area specifically, um, to you know, so that that representation is there, and I think that's something too. Another issue um, that lacks is the representation because I I think back when I was you know ten, thirteen years old. You know, I'm like, well, where, where are these, you know, these young girls that look like me or, you know, that are successful and are doing things? And so um, that's really been my main avenue uh, mm-hmm. because my, our mentorship program has not been officially released yet. Uh, but that's really been my main avenue. I've been reaching out to local organizations to, to team up with them to just have a conversation similar to what we're doing, um, you know, the importance of travel and and really getting to know yourself, you know, we're, we're constantly changing, especially at that age, you know, 10, right. not going to be the same <laughs> the next day. And so, you know, I believe like if you can at least start that foundation of, of thinking about it, you know, why do I, why does it make me tick or why do I do that? Um, that is perfect bedding for an amazing young woman someday. And so that's pretty much been my main two avenues because COVID has been um, a little bit of an in- impedance mm-hmm. uh, as far as like, the, you know, the physical face-to-face contact because I've, I've, that is the best way. But um, via 
technology of Zoom and stuff, reaching out to local nonprofits and and upholding myself to the same standard that I am trying to project to these, these young girls. Well, all right. Well, I couldn't have said that better myself, but I do want to know before we get to the last couple of questions, how has your mother and your family, um, I know they're very re- received, you know, they've received everything you've done and very been re- very receptive, but how has it changed their thought process of wanting to learn more about travel and are there going to be any experiences coming up in the next uh, uh, future, should we say, in, hopefully in 2021 or 22? Um, you know, I think now that my family has seen, seen me, you know, come back in one piece and, and safely from, from all these, these, these places that their, uh, subconscious fears have kind of been reassured and, and answered. And I have noticed in conversation, I've got some family in, in Maryland, they're in another book club and they've talked about, you know, how they they want to travel and set up you know family trips to x y and z and and even though my family hasn't they're not necessarily travel bugs but the it's a huge step and i take it as of the big big accomplishment you know just the talks about even you know going out of the state Mm -hmm. um you know because everyone doesn't necessarily have the means of traveling abroad but and if that's the case, I do encourage, you know, go to the next town over because all it takes is, you know, a city line and you're in two different worlds. And exactly. so, you know, go to the next city or, or go drive that extra, you know, two and a half hours to get to that big city of your state and just just be, you know, just uh, observe how the way of life is. You know, so my family definitely has taken a few pages out of my book and I, I see and I've heard their excitement for travel, which lets me know that they're, they are eager and they desire more of themselves. So um, I definitely have seen a difference um, in my family for sure. Could you repeat the second question? I'm sorry. I said, could you repeat the second part of the question? Mm, I can't even remember what the <laughs> we're, okay. we're good, Raisin. Okay. I think we, I think you answered everything that I needed on that. But no, okay. I, I think the the other question was how your mom has you know been a part of this and her reaction to everything because I definitely you know know that you know what you've been doing. Your mom has been a huge supporter, and then I think the 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 beauty of like we talked about earlier is the fact that she didn't know that you were doing all this stuff. So, what other mm-hmm. encouragement has your mother provided you since all of this has happened? Um, you know, I honestly, I think we kind of play off of each other because uh, in my mom not knowing <laughs> that I was doing the book until the book came in the mail one day, um, she has sort of swallowed that fear that I swallowed a few years ago mm-hmm. and has started to really dig in and and devote time towards her business and, and serving her target audience of single single parents. And, and so in seeing her work hard, you know, I see her stay up late. Um, she's, she's got a success coach that she's working closely with. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I see her dedicate her time to her assignments and, you know, just reading up on her audience and how to make this better. That then I'm like, oh, snap, Mom, you know, mama doing it. Okay, I need, I need to sign <laughs> up for this area. I need, to, I need to send that email out, you know, that newsletter out that I'm mm-hmm. five days late on. You know, I need to I mean, go ahead and, you know, fulfill this and do that. So I think we both, we feed into each other silently. You know, we do tell each other, you know, we're proud of each other. But I, I think our observation skills are the, the main thing that we're capturing and we're, like, we're feeding off of. Um, but, yeah, she definitely uh, silently <laughs> motivates me to keep going, keep trying new things. And even when, you know, I come to her with ideas, I'm like, you know, this, I'm thinking about doing this. And, you know, she, she tells me straight up in a gentle manner, you know, this is great. And have you thought about this, that, and the third? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, she, she's been great. 
she's been great yeah and i know she has and i just love your mom death i just love her so i know she's proud (laughs) we are all proud of you and you know the journey that you are on will continue to move forward and you know for these young listeners these young women who are listening right now understand that your journey is your own but if you're not (laughs) stepping out on it you're never going to know what it's going to feel like. And it doesn't matter whether you're an introvert or whether you're an extrovert. The key is, is that action is what makes things work and move forward. Taking that step forward, having that little bit of faith and keep moving. So Regine, you know, we're down to the end of the show. Tell the listeners where they can find your book. I remember the past walked. Yes, you can find uh, I Remember the Past Walk, that's E-Y-E, Remember the Past Walk, on both Amazon.com as well as my website, that's www.eyerembr.com. Um, and I've also got some amazing bookmarks as well as some uh, unique and beautiful journal pens because we do have a journal section in the back of the book for reflection. Got to have that. Um, that would make perfect for your experience while reading. All right. You guys heard us live and you heard it from this amazing young lady, Miss Regine Bumper, who's the author of I Remember the Paths Walked. Again, support Regine, support her efforts, everything she's doing. Become a part of it and make your own dream. Start making your own path. Understanding what it means to walk that path and talk that path is because of you. So again, enjoy your evening. I hope that you enjoyed this evening with us, spending that little, little bit of time with us. Remember, we are here. They're all through the month. Of, we're here through the month of November, but we are also coming towards an end of this show. Um, but this is a special edition because we're going to do two major shows this month. So I'm real excited about that. So we will be back next week with another new guest on the author's corner. And remember um, that, like I said, we are going to be moving the author's corner in collaborating with your resource for success podcast starting in 2021. So there would be one show, but we will always have some amazing authors as well as our regular business guests that we have, as well as music artists. We have a full circle of individuals that will be part of one show versus having two. But of course, again, like I said, we will be back next week with another new author that I think you will enjoy, but I appreciate you again, Regine, for coming on with me this evening. And thank Thank you so much for spending time. Thank you. You're welcome. And for everyone else, you all have a good evening and until next time, we'll talk to you soon. Good night. Good night, everyone. And thank you for tuning in tonight. We'll be back next month on Friday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time with two more amazing guests. Follow us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Author Kimberly McLemore. Music by Audionautics.com. <laughs>